I've been told that everyone has some kind of traumatic event in his or her life, whether physical, emotional, mental, or a combination. Some stories help us realize how lucky we really are. Everything I write about is 100% true, and there will be times when my writing will make me sound as emotionless as a sponge, but the reason for this will be explained at a later date. This happened to me when I was 11 years old. It was a sunny Sunday in the last week of what used to be known as the six weeks holiday. Two of my friends and I went down to the park to muck about. Now in this park is a gate that leads down to a public walkway across the road. And across the road is a dirt path that takes you down into the part of the woods that my mates and I called San Diego. <laughs> Back then, the river down there was gorgeous. Very little pollution, pebble shore, and if you knew where to look, you could find all sorts, from Coca-Cola bottles dated from the 60s right down to the coolest looking stones. It was a treasure trove. Anyway, this road was always quiet on early Sunday afternoons. And I mean, it was like a ghost road in that three hours could go by and not a single car could be seen. So there we were, three kids with eyes full of treasure signs, and off we went through the gate. And shit happened. I got hit by a car driven by a 17-year-old lad who had just passed his test four days prior. And so his father, <laughs> a high-ranking cop, <laughs> had bought him a juicy little runner as a gift. I survived what's known as a trauma-induced full right hind amputation. In other words, my pelvis was cleanly snapped in half and on a 45 degree angle, and a quarter of my body was amputated on sight. My coccyx, hip, ass cheek, and of course my entire leg were literally torn off in the time it took to blink. Shock can be a beautiful thing in these cases, and despite being wide awake and wholly aware of the whole thing, I was blissfully pain free something for which we can all be thankful. I had no other injuries, not so much as a scratch or even a broken nail. I needed a grand total of 11 liters of blood, a two-day coma, several zillion surgeries, and a few other bits and bobs. How I survived this is unknown, but how little time it took for me to recover is unreal. Five months is all it took. Five months, and I was up and about on crutches, only for an hour or two at the max, but I was using them. One year later, and I was starting to train for the junior athletics for disabled people, while just four years after being ripped in two, I was climbing mountains with the British Army to promote equality and awareness for all. My accident isn't my story, but as it was the beginning of 24 years of sheer oddness, it had to be included. And those 24 years all began when I died. No heartbeat, no pulse, no breath, yada yada, for two minutes and 38 seconds. That was an awfully long time for somebody in my situation to be without a sign of life. I can tell you who was in the operating room and exactly what they were doing, yet, for all intents and purposes, I was clinically dead. I remember going around that room, looking at myself, being angry that they cut off my waist-length blonde hair. And at one point, I managed to knock a scalpel onto the floor. The main surgeon, Dr. Cook, literally stopped what he was doing, looked down at the scalpel, sighed, and said, Get back here, madam. It was as though all his patients had had out-of-body experiences and ran around his OR playing silly bastards. I've never been in an earthquake, but I imagine what happened following that is what a quake feels like, only without the sound. The walls shook, at least they did for me. And I vividly remember losing my balance, and the next thing I know, I'm awake in my intensive care bed telling my grandparents a joke around the breathing tube. Not 30 hours after survival being torn in two, and I was joking around. It was normal to me back then, but now I've experienced all that I have. The oddness of that in itself is quite spectacular. I couldn't tell you how much time had passed between the first oddity of mine and my waking up in my room, but I can tell you that when Dr. Cook came by to dazzle me with his yo-yo skills, 
he just gave me this look that said, I know what you were about, young lady. Nothing was ever said between us, but he knew. <laughs> By the stars, that man somehow knew I was in that room. Was it paranormal? I don't know. But whatever it was, it was as odd as anything could possibly get. I have 24 years of utter oddness, and I've had nowhere and nobody to share them with until I fell in with the storytellers on YouTube. If anybody wants to hear about them or has questions about my accident, I'll happily oblige. As my accident was in 1991, I can't provide any links to newspaper articles and whatnot, but should you wish to see the brutal size of my skin graft, one only need to ask. If you request this, do keep in mind that it isn't pretty. Cinders. Hey everybody, I'm Bella Deadwood. Thank you for watching my video, and if you have any questions for the author of the story, I have a link to her Reddit post in the description box. If you have a story you want narrated, you can either privately message me with the story and a note giving me permission, or you can head over to our free horror stories on Reddit and post it there. Be sure to thank Unit 522 for setting that up if you do. Thank you once again, and please, now that summer vacation is around the corner, keep an eye out for kids. They're going to be everywhere. Until next time, I'll leave you to your nightmares. Good night, guys.